Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town, and today I'm going to be doing the scribble challenge. Basically what that means is I'm just going to create a random scribble, I'll close my eyes and just try to do something completely random, and then I'm going to make a drawing on top of it that incorporates the scribble and hopefully looks good. So before I do anything else, I'm going to draw my scribbles and I'm going to start practicing. I knew I wanted to make one big piece at the end, but um, I thought at first it would be good for me to take one of these scribbles and try to incorporate it into a few different sketches just to get me in the mindset of drawing around these. So at first I used this scribble um, just to make a bun in the back of a girl's hair. I thought that that would be a very easy way to integrate it um, and that it would be camouflaged very well into part of her hair. I knew that using hair would be sort of easy mode for this first one because obviously hair is something that's super free-flowing and as you can see it's already almost completely absorbed into this drawing and you can't even really tell that there was a scribble there. Um, so I knew I wanted to do something more difficult and try a few more drawings around this scribble before I went on to the final. Once I was done, I put it over in the corner and I decided to do another one. Um, so for my next one, I thought it could look like part of a girl's dress, um, like a really fluffy tulle style dress, kind of like a ballerina might wear. Um, and I just uh, basically made another half to it and made it into a skirt, basically. So that was another pretty easy one, I feel like. Um, and at this point I was thinking I'm going a little too easy on myself and I want to incorporate the scribble a little more directly into some art um, instead of hiding it behind hair and fluff um, as I had been doing with these last few. So for this one, I tried to keep it front and center over the face. I started to see this little tiara kind of thing um, in the middle that I could draw a face around and I immediately started to think of like a mermaid. I was seeing these sort of weird flowing sort of um, spirally sort of shapes and I thought that using some tentacles and making her into an octopus mermaid would be super fun. Um, so basically I just tried to continue all the shapes that were in the original squiggle and I incorporated that into the rest of her design. I think she turned out really well and I was quite happy with her. So she was the last um, piece of practice that I did before I went on to do the, uh, the final piece. Um, and because she was turning out well, I spent a little more time on her just sort of drawing in little tentacles and things um, so that she looks more like a little octopus girl. Um, and yeah, like I said, I just tried to incorporate all of the elements of the squiggle into the whole design because I felt like I wasn't doing that with the other two. And with this one, um, I really wanted it to be fully inspired mostly by this scribble that I had drawn. This exercise is something that I mentioned in my art block video as one of the ways that you can get yourself out of an art block, um, but it also has other purposes. It's a really good thing to challenge yourself if you're finding yourself stuck in a rut. And I already noticed with this little mermaid that um, because of the scribble, and the nature of it that I was making a more dynamic pose than I might otherwise have done just because I was um, accommodating a shape that I wouldn't have drawn uh, myself. So I chose one of the other scriggles, <laughs> scriggles, scribbles that I hadn't quite used yet. Um, and I immediately started to draw in this girl in a hat. I knew right away that that weird um, like surfboard shape up at the top would be able to be incorporated into a really dramatic hat. And I started trying to build this sort of bust up portrait of this aviator girl um, around the scrib scribble. This one I almost approached as like a tattoo cover-up kind of concept where I would have this rather thick scribble um, underneath the whole drawing and I would keep it at 50% opacity uh, so that you could see it at the end but overall I was just trying to be inspired by the shape and not actually hide the entire scribble in the drawing. Um, so I basically just wanted the lines of the scribble to inform most of the information we have about her. Like the most interesting things about her are this big hat that she has and um, whatever's flying behind her head, which I think I changed a couple times between her scarf and other things. And for the inking, I'm using the Kyle T. Webster Thick and Thin Brush. Um, I get asked almost every video what I use, so um, I'm sticking with that one. Uh, for this video as I usually do. Though uh, you'll see when I get into the colors that I'm actually gonna switch things up when I get to the coloring stage. 
Since I want to leave the scribble overall um, in the background at some point, I'm going to try to use some blacks and things, uh, like strong blacks and solid blacks, to distract from the places where the scribble is not fully immersed in the drawing. Um, I also thought a good way to do this is to add like stripes and textures on different parts of her clothes, which actually reminded me how important it is to draw textural elements into fabric and stuff, which was actually a really um, surprising benefit fit to doing this challenge as well. Um, honestly, I think anytime you're challenging yourself and you're pushing yourself to do something that you wouldn't normally do, especially if you're someone who draws a lot, that it's really healthy and good for you um, to, yeah, to do stuff like that. It is really important to not get stuck in a rut and to not get too comfortable with what you're doing just because uh, you always want to be improving and finding new ways to enjoy art. So that's why I think these challenges are so fun and important. I've seen some criticism of them, various ones for different reasons. I've seen a lot of people are not overly pleased with the like cheap art supply challenge or the Crayola challenge because they feel like it's being critical of people who have to use those supplies all the time. Um, and I was actually wondering for you guys if you felt that way because uh, the cheap art supply challenge is something that I think I would quite enjoy doing, but if it seems like elitist or something, then obviously I don't want to do that. Um, so let me know if that's something you'd be interested in seeing me do. Uh, it would be the first video in quite a while where I would be drawing um, in real life and not on the computer, so um, that's also something to consider. But yeah, let me know how you feel about that. Sorry to get off topic again. Um, anyway, uh, the inking is just about finished now and I'm starting to think about how I can um, incorporate color into this and make this really work. Now for the shading, I know you guys see that I usually do cell shading, but recently I've been playing around with a few different ways to shade. And for this one I wanted to use a gouache brush. Now gouache in real life is a type of paint that um, is completely wet when you put it down, almost like a watercolor, but then has like a chalky finish when it's actually dry. And it's a kind of interesting and difficult paint because if you go over it again with water or anything, it will ruin it. So um, in real life I really don't like working with gouache, but I actually really love the soft um, sort of washy color that it uh, can bring about in a digital painting. And I decided to go with sort of a slate blue and a um, warm light uh, to make this sort of shading layer before I even put any of the colors on. It's just another way to shake things up, which I think these challenges, like I said before, um, are really good for. And when I go in for the colors, I just try to think more about her personality and stuff. She seems like a bit of a spitfire, so I give her red hair. And um, for her outfit, I'm getting sort of an interesting vintage, almost Carmen Sandiego vibe from her. Um, and I decided to use a sort of olive -y forest green um, on her outfit. And there we have it. She's basically done. Um, you can still see the lines of the scribble underneath. Uh, it's not 100% covered up, but it is incorporated fully into this illustration, and I think it doesn't really disrupt it very much. Um, and I just took this scribble out so that you could see what it started as and what it turned into. Um, I'm pretty happy with this transformation and I really enjoyed this challenge. I think you guys should definitely try it out, especially if you feel like you're stuck in a rut or if you have art block. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and I will see you next week. Hey, what are you still doing here? Are you waiting to hear about my red bubble where I have uh, shirts and notebooks and stickers um, because uh, that's what ha that's what's happening there look look at my red bubble it's great there's a link in the description um, if you want to buy any of the stuff or you can just look at it um, and if you have any requests for more merchandise and like designs that I could add to the store please let me know in the comments because it's brand new and I only have one design yet um, so yeah, that'd be super helpful. All right, see you guys later. Big thank you to my patrons, including Vilka, Lachlan MD, Christy Stewart, Muffins McGee, Paynamel, Calvin Poem, Ya Boy ST, Adrian Delport, Joel Turner, Laura Buter, French Fry Bird, Elizabeth Alvin, Riley James, Super Pixel, Angela Taylor, Violet Wilkes, the blah blah blah. Kate Meekins, Addy Visual, and Live Likes to Draw. If you would like to hear your name at the end of one of these videos, or would like to see my YouTube art earlier than the YouTube video comes out, um, you can become a patron too. Just check out the description box for a link to that. Thank you guys so much for your support.